Am I willing to start questioning my assumptions about everything? Instead of just trying to take a stand and say, well, I'll never be able to live a life like that. You know, even, even Einstein said things about Gandhi, like, for generations to come, you know, it, people will scarcely believe that there ever in flesh and blood walked a man like Gandhi. I mean, Einstein was, was humbled and honored by, in his lifetime, while he's splitting the atom, that there was this man named Gandhi over in India that was living, actually living a life of what seemed to be peace. And so Gandhi was a symbol for millions, and today still remains a symbol for millions, like John Lennon and lots of others. But once you start to read the autobiography of Gandhi, like in the book, you see all this torment. You see, he hated being called Mahatma, because it meant great soul. And he was in the context of India, with all these great, you know, self-realized beings and saints and mystics, and he, he felt highly self-conscious around the word Mahatma. He, he said, oh, you've got the wrong one. You know, if you knew what was going on in my consciousness, you wouldn't call me Mahatma. So, these kind of stories, all they do is, is they bring it back to a humbling experience of how important it is to empty your mind of everything that you believe, because anything that you hold on to that's part of this illusory belief system will, <coughs> will seem to bring about conflict. It's not that it's real, but in awareness it seems to be that way. So we're not trying to make idols out of Mother <coughs> Teresa and Gandhi, but it's more of a dismantling. <laughs> 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 Shattered. <laughs> it was very good. Like, like these bigger ideas are very helpful to give the mind a context for where we're going and what the goal is. But I, I find myself like, through this retreat being frustrated that sometimes like we still have we, we have to loosen our belief in the person in the world, and that seems to be what it's about. And. Um, there, you know, so for a time there may be um, some usefulness for uh, solar power and wind power um, as we use these symbols to undo, you know, our um, our habits of just, you know, totally um, using up natural resources without any regard for sustainability. And, you know, my mind goes back and forth to just. Totally, for, you know, forget it. Forget about the earth. Forget about even being kind to the earth. Why, you know? To well, as long as I appear to be here, why not, you know, behave in a way that where I can get the most, you know, uh, harmony out of the least amount of like uh, effort. And, you know, use things that that would work in uh, in harmony with what's already here. So this is kind of, you know, where I feel, in a sense, where sometimes I, he I feel like I hear you saying, yeah, forget the whole thing, we're going, you know, we don't need this, we don't need anything here because we are in the unified field, and yet, um, I think a lot of people in this room still are concerned about what they're going to do when they leave this devotional. They, see, they seem to, you know, have to make a decision on how, how they're going to take these ideas and incorporate them in their lives where they're going back to or where they're going forward to. And yeah, it's, there it's true. seems to be the need for money and bank accounts yet and whatnot. And for some people, like you know, yourself and the messengers, you you you've got that handled because people are donating, but other people still have to do things in the world and just talking about a quantum field or whatnot isn't enough to, you know, to help you decide what to do and how to do that. Yeah, it, you will find that, that coming to this symbol of this devotional, of yes, there's all these movies and all this presentation of these high ideas, is, is really what it's coming down to is saying like, okay, here's your potential. Uh, it's there. It's, it's there for the grasping. Uh, it's, it's, it's not only possible to grasp it, but it's inevitable. It's, it's highly accessible. 
and then having group sessions, breakout sessions, uh, uh, individual one-on-one -on -one sessions, uh, having improvisational, you know, where, where you literally get to let it come up and act it out spontaneously, just let whatever comes to mind. All of these kind of techniques and, and exercises and things that we're doing are all just a way of the Spirit just saying, come home, come, come higher, keep coming. You know, we're coming up into that abstraction, but but, you know, when I spent hours talking to you and Carrie about all these relationship things, sexuality, use of resources, uh, you know, down to all the basics, getting down to the nitty-gritty, the details, uh, that is really where the rubber meets the road, you know, in, in the terms of consciousness, that, that what you seem to take away from this is like, I'm just offering tools, and when people write to me and say, you know, should I get married, should I get divorced, or should I do this or this or this, it's like, well, I'm willing to work with, with the mind on the beliefs and on the thoughts, but, but you're going to have to do it for yourself, uh, or give, your, give way to this for yourself. I can't, uh, I don't claim to do the darshan or, you know, to do the diksha or all these kind of shortcuts where you just come, come for a session, I'll look into your eyes and then you can, you can drop it all. You have to question these assumptions, you have to unplug from the matrix yourself. That's not my job, I can't do that. I, I would say once you do it for yourself, you've really done it for everyone though, so I don't have any kind of burning I don't have trouble sleeping at night going, Keith is not getting it. I mean, I, gosh, I've come 25, 40 different ways and he still talks about these bank accounts and da 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 da. I, I just don't have that in my consciousness. But what I do offer is, I'm just saying, we're <coughs> offering the potentiality of it and we're offering the tools in a practical way to go at this. And then it's really up to you uh, to, to go for it from that perspective. And, and to follow your guidance, you know, if, if you're getting into, like you say, uh, looking at more sustainable ways of existing on earth with, with wind or solar or, you know, other ways that seem simpler and more in harmony, good, that's your guidance, then that's good, you should follow it. If somebody came to me and said, you know, well, uh, I'm going to go off on a world tour and get married and, and sing songs and this and this and that's my guidance, then that's beautiful too. The guidance can come through in many, many specific forms, but the tools are still the same. When we talk about these tools in mind, they're all the same for all of us, and it's just really making it accessible. So, when people come and they say, gee, I, I, wish, I wish this uh, retreat or this devotional had been more of this or more of that or whatever, well that's just you perceive what you believe. If, if anything was lacking in this devotional, if anything was lacking in everything that was offered and presented, it's, it's only in the delusional mind of the ego perceiver <laughs> that it was lacking. In, in, in essence, the unified field has been all that's been there. It's a forgiven world and yet you have to actually open up and, and yield into that forgiven world to experience the benefits of the of the unified field.